Okay, so this is supposed to be the last video presenting the basics of spirit science. I guess it has to present quite a lot then, because so far, all that's been presented is demonstrably false crap and absolutely meaningless crap. Better get some popcorn ready. This one's going to be pretty long. Does whiskey count as popcorn? There's lots of kinds of energy through and around all of us, and that'll be a future topic later on. Today, I want to talk about two specific energies that can be expressed through this image. The energy that flows here is male and female energy. Okay, you're gonna have to define those terms. Male energy is focused, and female energy is creative and random. Okay, if I tell you that a blurgle is green, do you have any clue what a blurgle actually is? What is male energy? What is female energy? I'm not asking for examples of properties they have. I'm asking for definitions. I'm going to use some super basic sacred geometry to demonstrate this. How is sacred geometry any different from just plain old geometry? Uh, I mean, what makes it sacred? How can you tell if it's sacred or not? This is the Fibonacci spiral. We're going to be talking a lot more about it when we dive into the topic. For now, all you have to know is that it starts at 1 and flows outward forever in a very specific way, and is present in all life everywhere. Hang on, that's... that... uh... <sighs> That's not a Fibonacci spiral. As male energy flows through the spiral, it goes from base point to point, from here to here, to here to here. It doesn't curve, it just goes straight where it needs to be. If it goes straight to where it needs to be, shouldn't it be following the spiral instead? I mean, that would be a shorter path. Female energy, however, would flow in the actual spiral. It would go around, going in and around outside all of the lines, but still getting to the same or similar results. Okay, you still haven't explained what male and female energy are. How can you tell how they're moving? How did you measure it? How do you verify that female energy follows the spiral and male energy doesn't? Uh, what kind of device did you use to measure this? I mean, you, did you put like a, some, some kind of device somewhere along the spiral and you noticed that the energy flowed through it? Or, I mean, how did you do that? This is the graphic representation of how it flows, but it also acts in the same way. But what is it? It's the difference between driving straight to work and being on schedule all the time, and taking the scenic route because it's a more pleasant ride, even if it means being late. Okay, let me see if I get this straight. Male energy is a method of doing something? How can a method flow through a spiral? Both male and female energy, like the chakras, have their own traits. Male energy is linear, analytical, strategic, and practical. However, when male energy is constricted, it is very blundering and confrontational, and what tends to occur is not seeing all sides of a situation, or not being open to any other possibility other than the one being pursued. Oh, so... So it's a mindset. Well, same problem. How does a mindset flow through a spiral? Female energy, on the other hand, moves in curves. It does not stay inside the lines. It is creativity and movement. How does creativity flow through a spiral? One big difference between the two is that male energy looks at parts and female energy looks at holes. Look, okay, seriously, I get it. Obviously you're not talking about energy, the physical quantity. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm with you on this one. Words don't always have to mean the same thing. They can mean different things in different contexts. That's fine. The problem is that one second you're talking about something that moves through spirals and you present examples of physical spirals. I mean, we're not talking about some abstract mathematical construct here. We're talking about the shape of a seashell or something like that. So clearly we're talking about something that actually moves through physical space. And then you try to talk about mindsets and methods of doing things. You're talking about something else, but you're using the same word for it. This is why you have to define your terms. You have no foundation to build on here. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, brain hemispheres. We have two of them. And if you remember what you learned in grade 10 biology, this will be familiar. The left brain is the male energy side of the brain. Okay, I get male. What I don't get is energy. Can't you just call it the male or the masculine part of the brain? The right brain is the female energy side of the brain. Same problem here. Creativity, yearning, sensuality, passion. 
these are things that we traditionally associate with femininity, I suppose. But not with energy. And how does this have anything to do with mindsets, creativity, methods, and energy flowing through spirals? No, I'm not gonna let that go. Okay, so as a species, we are primarily left-brained. Well, incredibly left-brained. This basically means that as a species, we essentially have a male energy imbalance. Our male energy is really messed up, and that's why we're where we are right now. By where we are, I mean the economical, political, financial, religious, nuclear- Bad things. Okay, yeah, I get it. Moving on. All of these issues together are further proof that we don't understand how to be harmonious because our male energy is out of sync with each other and the planet. Two problems here. One, you identify a bunch of problems and assert that they all have a single cause, and you present absolutely no evidence to support this. The second problem, our male energy is out of sync with each other and the planet. That means absolutely nothing. Our male energy and what are out of sync with each other? Are you saying that there's some sort of frequency involved, something that moves back and forth? Like uh, a wave or a, a vibration. Yeah, I know you don't know what a vibration is, but... Uh, <sighs> Otherwise, out of sync just doesn't fit in there. And, and that means that you're not talking about a mindset. Because mindsets don't move back and forth or... or uh, oh. Yeah, I shouldn't try to make sense of this, I know, but... Th then... If we look at the next part, I mean, if, if if it is a mindset, then how can a mindset be out of sync with a planet? That's kind of like saying uh, an opinion is out of alignment with a doorknob. I mean, it means absolutely nothing. So let's look at indigo children and super psychics. Since sometime in the 80s, new children started appearing with different or unusual traits. Their numbers began to increase, and today, nearly 100% of all children born in North America are indigo children. According to this video, an indigo child is basically a child that rebels and has learning difficulties, and has a hard time adjusting to the traditional educational system. There's absolutely nothing new about this. Jordan also mentions ADHD, and, well, that's not really a new thing either. The only thing new is the diagnosis. So what's causing this? Well, for one, there are two new DNA blocks being activated within these kids. They are microcephalin and ASPM. Both of these blocks are designed to regulate brain growth, giving the kids a broader spectrum of thinking and a newer way of learning. It took me about 10 seconds to find these papers, and uh, they disagree with you. Because of this, the average IQ of an indigo child is about 140. So the average IQ of North American children nowadays is 140. Is that what you're saying? Because they're all... in. Almost all of them are indigo children, and indigo children have an average IQ of 140, so you're basically saying that the average child born in North America has an IQ of 140. Source, please. We're just learning now that our school system's methods of teaching are becoming outdated. It's because our kids are changing. It's not our kids that are changing, Jordan, it's our culture. In the Western world today, we have this craving for instant gratification. Stores have to be open 24-7. Fast food, you know, everything has to be now. Something that doesn't offer an instant reward is just not worth doing. That mindset sucks. But there you go. It's not that our kids are changing, it's that our culture values different things today than it did, say, 50 years ago. Let's move on to the badassery that is the super psychics. These kids are hardcore. They can do anything, literally. Some can move solid objects through walls with their minds. Some are blind, yet they can see everything around them from a myriad of different screens within their head. Okay, stop. Source, please. So, why haven't we heard about this? You'd think this would be huge in the world. Well, for one, almost all super psychic children are in China, and almost all of the evidence is hardly ever rendered into English. Ah. Convenient. And of course, no one bothers to translate groundbreaking worldview altering papers published by the Chinese scientists. Before we wrap up, we totally have to bring this video full circle. What on earth do the new children have to do with male and female energy? Wow, I I'm impressed.
That's actually a good question. Indigo children are directly connected to our species' male energy and super psychics to our female. As we grow closer and closer to the peak of the shift, the planet itself is beginning to change. What, what shift? No. No, Jordan, seriously, no, not even you. You can't possibly... <sighs> this has to do with astrology, doesn't it? On one half of the world, indigo children are being born. On the other half, super psychics. They are here to help the consciousness of the planet in an incredibly crucial time. You know, when people say that the Earth is a living organism or something like that, that that's not meant to be taken literally. There are way more indigo children on the planet than super psychics because it's our male energy that needs to understand. It's through the indigo children and their new way of thinking which is affecting the consciousness of the planet, putting us back onto the harmonious path. So if we have too much male energy, whatever that is, the way to restore the balance is to get even more. I mean, more indigo children, more male energy. There's already too much of it. How will this restore the balance? You know, I'm gonna stop trying to make sense of this. In the modern world, things like astral projection and channeling aren't really considered science. Not really. Well, that's putting it mildly. Because of this left brain constriction, we have lost a major part of what life is about. Yes, we have lost something. We've lost the part of our lives that involves believing in absolute nonsense. It means that we can focus on learning useful things that allow us to make progress instead of wasting our time believing in crazy crap that only holds us back. To Jordan and to any of his fans who are still watching this video, progress is a good thing. See ya.